Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning has been on the upcoming general election happening on Tuesday, April 6th. One of the races on the ballot is for Milwaukee County Supervisor District 10. The 10th District Supervisor will represent several neighborhoods in Milwaukee, including portions of downtown, the Brady Street area, and Lindsay Heights. My next guest is asking for your vote. Priscilla Cox. Jones. She is a graduate of St. Joan and Tita and attended Virginia State University in St. Petersburg, Virginia, where she majored in communications. Good morning, Priscilla. Good morning. Good to see you. Absolutely. Glad to be seen. Most definitely, especially during this pandemic, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's been a long road for us all, but it looks like uh, we're seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. So <laughs> yeah. with that said, I'd like to start off uh, knowing more about you and your background. So uh, really at the beginning of the year, you announced your plans to run for Milwaukee County Board of Supervisors. So uh, tell us more about you and what makes you want to take on this position. Well, you know, um, Andrea, t for me, timing is everything, okay? And um, as a mother raising a son in the 53205 zip code, I do believe it is important that we ensure that we have the resources for transportation, recreational services, our health and human services, as well as for our parks. So for me, running for office is just not running for a candidacy, but it's running for people to ensure that their voices are heard and to make sure that funding is allocated to those departments uh, that would get folks on to their next step and journey in life. Yeah, so uh, I have to mention you are one of the uh, members of the Cox family, which has been described as a Milwaukee Black political dynasty in years mm -hmm. past. So talk about the work that your family has done for the city and how that has influenced you. Okay, absolutely. So my mission for social change is deeper than just a family name. It is the values and morals my family has instilled in me, and it is the women and men in my family who have stepped up to serve and put social actions into place. So we're not just a proud family of a political dynasty or a legacy, but we're also servants in other capacities, such as education, law, and medicine. So I have witnessed sacrifices and heard the stories of the challenges that they have had to overcome and definitely to ensure the improved quality of life. And that is just something that I want to continue on. No matter how much I try to run from it, it always brings me back, okay? Um, as a human resource recruiter, I've worked with those who have had barriers with employment. And I've made those necessary connections and networks to ensure that I can get people to the jobs. And one of the things that I would love to do is to expand the transportation. As a human resource recruiter, I've heard the testimonies from the front end and the back end. So that was a passion that was driving from within me. Um, I see a disconnect with those who are coming out of incarceration. As a workshop facilitator and job developer, I hear it and I understand it. And so I feel that I am able to use my platform and my networks and partnerships to kind of fill and bridge that gap where people may feel disconnected. So for me, yes, I am, I am coming from a, a proud family of those who have served Milwaukee County for over 100 years, and I want to continue to do that and also show my son the way as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in the primary election, you garnered 42% of the votes out of five candidates, so, uh, or four other candidates, I should say. Your opponent is Darren Madison Jr. So uh, what would you say separate you from your opponent? Well, for me, um, I come from a, a mindset of a grassroots effort. That's been my, my drive my entire way. I believe that hard work and effort definitely pays off in the end. Um, as a county employee, when I work for Milwaukee County Parks, I work down at the lakefront. And one of the things I was like, gosh, you know, it's so clean down here, so peaceful. You know, I would love to walk in my neighborhood and community like that. So 11 years ago, I started Urban Grassroots Inc. And this was an idea to start with uh, beautifying our communities. You know, I believe that if we can change the way we view our community, we can change the minds of our community as well. And so for me, having a grassroots effort, um, 
I didn't get paid to do this. This all came out of my pocket. This came out of an idea. And this is something that I would love to continue to build on. Um, in the end, my, my, all, my in all goal is to hire those coming out of incarceration to kind of help them with those job skills, those soft skills that is needed to kind of get them onto their next uh, journey in their path. Mm -hmm. And so you've been a board member for the King Advisory for 10 years and served on the City of Milwaukee Bronzeville Board for five years. And mm -hmm. uh, you've also been the coordinator of the 4th of July City Programs at King Park for the last five years as well. So mm -hmm. uh, like your opponent, uh, you've put in a lot of time at a very yes. young age in uh, really understanding how uh, government works and being influenced uh, early on that you want to do this. Talk about some of the things that you'd like to see happen for District 10 if elected. Oh my gosh. So um, one of the things I definitely want to see is the expansion of transportation. Like I said, as a human resource recruiter, I understand the barriers people have. Um, youth and job creation is a big component to me. I am a basketball referee. I've been refereeing NPS basketball for the last 10 years. And that is a job component that our youth who attend school um, at the age of 17 can, can get a job. So those are the networks and partnerships that I want to bring to the table. Um, in addition to that, like I said, I would love to build on the platform of hiring those who are coming out of incarceration to help them with those job and soft skills. Um, there is funding from urban agriculture that is coming down from federal grants. I would love to implement some gardens into our five county parks that are in the 10th district. Um, for me, that is job creation, that is diversity and inclusion, and that is community engagement. You know, you have a lot of hardcore residents that live in the 10th district that love where they live, but would love to see more effort and more resources being brought into the neighborhood. Um, in addition to that, I would love to see um, right here on 12th and Belief, we have a facility that has double parking where we can utilize and envision the same thing that is going on at Miller Parkway in the south side of Milwaukee with the corona testing. We have the ample space we can set it up in the same dynamic that they've done at Miller Parkway. And that way we can bring resources to the people, okay? Because at the end of the day, it is to ensure that government is working for the people. And that is one thing that I've seen my family do for over the course of time since I was a young girl. I was groomed. I watched my mother who represented the 10th district for over 22 years do that. And I would love to fulfill those same footsteps and also to have the people of the 10th district to support me in that effort as well. Mm -hmm. You've been uh, going around uh, knocking on doors and oh talking to the residents in mm -hmm. the uh, district where you would like to serve. And I'm just curious, what are some of the things that you hear uh, those residents say is most important to them? You know, um, the one thing that I do love um, when I'm talking to people um, at the doors is how they um, reassure me how the county services is the safety net for the people. I'm hearing concerns about education. I am hearing concerns about the corona testing and the disparities of black and browns of not receiving the vaccinations and so forth. I am hearing at the doors of jobs. People are in need of jobs. People are in need of resources. Um, a big conversation that I'm having at the doors as well is with mental health. With everything that we've endured with this pandemic and racial disparities that are just flying going north and left and south and west and everywhere, um, there needs to be some control on that, okay? The people need to feel reassured that they are taking care of, that we have it under control. So one of the things that I would love to do is to ensure that the government works for the people, is to ensure that the people are meeting the needs uh, for the resources of what is owed to them. And I wanna make sure that I am the voice for that. Okay, so uh, Priscilla, like your opponent, you too were born and raised in District 10. Yes. So when you look around the district and you're able to uh, kind of compare and contrast maybe how it was when you were growing up to how it is now, are there any things that you'd like to tackle if, in fact, you are elected right off the bat? Yes. Um, some of the things for me growing up, um, living in the 10th district, uh, traveling uh, down North Avenue, up North Avenue, and so forth, back when I was younger, businesses was thriving on North Avenue. We had black businesses. We had um, 
uh, resources at our fingertips, you know, and those are some of the things that I would love to see the envision um, if elected that office. I do intend also to work with other levels of government to ensure that resources are brought to the 10th district, not just for the residents, but for Milwaukee County as a whole. Um, and I'm going to go right back to the statement I said before. I do believe that the government should be working for the people. And that is one thing that I will love and be honored to do and to serve the residents. And when we look at some of the top issues that you've said is most important to you, you said you'd like to reallocate the Sheriff's Department's funds to prevention and early yeah. intervention programs. Talk a little bit about that, if you would. Absolutely. So as a human resource recruiter, we'll understand if there is some foundation issues going on, if there's a high turnover rate and things like that. So there are some conversations that need to be had to ensure that the employees of the House of Correction are you know not necessarily satisfied but they're they're good to go with the pay with the the perks and all the other benefits that come with it there's no reason why you are receiving the training at house of correction and then a couple months later you go travel 15 miles down from the house of correction and get a job you know so are there some questions that need to be had in pay are there some questions that need to be had in as far as the environment that they work in you know let's get down to the foundation issues as opposed to just trying to put band-aids on it you know i'm about real solutions having real conversations um to kind of figure out why is it such a high turnover rate and that will help with letting up some of that budget funding for transportation for our parks for our health and human services, for the money that is allocated and that is used for the House of Correction, especially in our overtime, it's sucking and draining the other resources that the county services can offer the people, which could possibly be with an expansion of transportation. You know, if we're able to kind of put together maybe a committee financial task force, um, these folks will oversee the budget over a year time to ensure that their um, funding is not being highly used in, in ways and in areas that can be utilized elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I, I think that this is uh, going to be a very tight race because <laughs> uh, when you talk about, you know, young people uh, really having that passion and the desire to take on uh, these positions in politics, such as yourself, it really is uh, invigorating, I think, for the community. Mm -hmm you are uh, really uh, today's leaders that will be around to groom the next generation. So uh, just as we wrap up, I'm interested with us uh, dealing with the pandemic for what, over a year now, uh, yeah. what have you learned personally about just everything that has taken place? You know, um, I do believe that as a mother, we've taken on so many different roles. We've worn so many different hats of having to work from home, having to school our children virtually and things like that. And then somehow um, find a way for them to have normalcy as well. So it's taken a toll on us all. Um, I think people have fell into depression from this. I feel like people, um, you find out who your real friends are, you know, <laughs> if you don't find out anything else. So um, it's a multitude of things. It's hard to just pinpoint one. But I would say that in the end, um, having that human touch for me means most. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. And it goes without saying, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. And I appreciate it. Vote Priscilla Cox Jones, April 6, Milwaukee. Thank you. Priscilla Cox Jones is a candidate for Milwaukee County Supervisor District 10. You can visit her website at Cox Jones, the number four, CNTY. Dot com. For more information, you can also uh, keep in mind that this general election is right around the corner, Tuesday, April 6th. And you can also visit vote411.org to find out more about registration and see what's on your ballot. You can also visit milwaukee.gov or call 414-286-VOTE. That's 286-8683 for any information you need. That's going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, I thank you for watching and I do hope you join us again next week as we take another look at our issues, Milwaukee. Have a great day.